So my family, we went to church occasionally, but for me, it was more just a, like a concept. Like I, I, I knew that there was this thing called God, Jesus died on the cross, but had no meaning to my life in any way. When I was two years old, my mum and dad got a divorce. And then when I was 14 years old, I lost a friend to suicide. So everybody started smoking weed that I went to school with. So I started smoking weed as well and um, started drinking and um, started finding affirmation in places that probably weren't the most life giving. But then I went to university and then that drug habit that I had when I was at school then became a daily occurrence for three years of my life at university. Whilst I was at uni, I was studying and there was this guy who happened to be from the same place where I was from. Um, we didn't know each other, I never met him before. He was on the same course as me, we were in the same football team. I remember just saying to him, I was like, what's your deal, bro? I like, I don't get it. And he just simply said, I'm a Christian and smiled at me. I was like, okay. And that's as far as that conversation went. My drug habits became quite, I'd say, took a, another step on because as I was earning more and the excess of my life was then was then growing outwardly it looked like I was having a great time but inwardly it was just a mess and um, so I decided to move back to Southampton and when I did that a friend just invited me to come and play football I got invited each week to come and was um, in this group where people were genuinely interested in my day-to-day -day life I then snapped my elbow on a drunken drug night out. It was like three o'clock in the morning, snapped my elbow, meant I couldn't play football anymore. And this friend who I met at university who then invited me to football, he had been continually trying to get me to come to a church thing and I'd just been continually saying, no, it's not gonna happen. But then he um, said, mate, you've got nothing else to do with your evenings now. Why don't you come and try Alpha? So I was like, yeah, why not? The first week came and he said, bro, are you coming? And I was like, no. The second week came, it was the same question and the same response. And then the third week came and he was like, bro, I'm coming to pick you up and you're coming to Alpha. As the evening went on, week three, um, why did Jesus die for us? The topic of forgiveness and something I've wrestled with my whole life. Like, how do I forgive my family for growing up in a divorced family? How do I forgive my friend for killing herself? How do I forgive myself for all of the decisions and actions and the way that I've treated people for the last 10 years or so of my life. And it was just this, this like moment of going, wow, I really need to like think about this. And I just stood at the back of church. Like everybody was like, like worshiped with the hands in the air. And I was just like, I was like, if I, if I believe this and if I want this to be part of my life, I need to, I need to give this a try. So as I like lifted my hands up, I just remember a, a, song, a song we were singing that says, when our praise goes up, our walls come down. Um, and in that, in that moment, my walls came flooding down. Um, I cried uncontrollably. I like, but they weren't sad tears, they weren't happy tears. They were just kind of like a realization tears that God was with me in those high moments and I had denied him. God was with me in those really low moments in my life and I denied him and God was with me now when I was denying him. So at that moment, I was like, I'm in, like, that I give my life to you, Jesus. But overall, the thing that dropped straight away was the anger that I held in my life. A black friends and family would describe me as a bit of a grenade. And that's changed, like, that isn't what I'm described as now. The difference that Jesus has made in my life is knowing that I'm loved, like I know that I am loved. 